Know what I mean? Welcome to Ernest Roulette, the only Ernest podcast with a wheel. Let's spin it. I bet it'll be an Ernest movie. Ernest saves Christmas. Well, we watched Ernest Saves Christmas, and now we're going to talk about it. Ernest Saves Christmas, directed by John Cherry. Mm -hmm. Came out November 11th, 1988. It is the second of the Disney Ernest films. It's one produced, year after camp, right? Yes. It uh, came out about, I'm it was like 15, 16 months after camp. It had double the budget of camp, oh. and it made $28 million, which is a little more than camp made. Mm -hmm. So not like a... Magnitude more money, <laughs> not even double the money, but a little but more. It money. made more money. Yeah, it made more money. Probably a big hit on home video too. Yeah, I think I rented this one probably more than goes to camp. So uh, just like right off the bat, like did we enjoy the movie? Like was it? Yes, you did. This was yeah, fun. That's good. How about you? I think it's a decent earnest movie. I'll admit that I didn't get to watch it recently. I have seen this one more than most earnest movies though. Uh, we watched it like yesterday. Correct. I have not seen it recently. But the wheel, the wheel did say says, so. <laughs> well, you'll have to explain it to me, which will be a good opportunity for me to not talk as much as oh, Mr. Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> Let's so, take it from here. All right. Well, the movie opens with I kind of like the uh, the opening credits. It's basically old Coke advertisements. It's a cheap opening credit sequence, but it's also weirdly classy because it's all this old... Norman uh, Rockwell old, style. Yeah, Norman Rockwell's paintings of Santa. I feel like every Ernest movie has that one thing that makes it feel like it's got Legitimate. more money than it does. This is that sequence, and it might be like royalty-free artwork or something. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> no, maybe they got money because they're showing Santa drinking Coke in it, but... Uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Actually, didn't at this point... Did Coke own Disney... I don't think so. No, didn't uh, no, Coke, no. Coke had a thing with Sony in the late '80s, so I don't think they, they owned Disney. They owned a movie studio at some point, yeah, probably in 1989. Disney, but that was yeah, like yeah. a year later, I think. It doesn't matter. And, uh, er, and it's a Christmas movie. Um, the music is by Mark Snow, uh, who went on to make the X Files theme. Yeah, cool. Um, but it is a real score this time. Uh, <laughs> The last movie just had goofy synth stuff, but this time there's an orchestra kind of helping elevate things, give it that Christmas uh, immensity. So. so Santa arrives in Orlando, Florida by plane. Mm -hmm. uh, it starts off with him. He's just talking to like some businessman on the trip, and he's really telegraphing that he's Santa. He's like, <laughs> oh, I come from up north. Oh, yeah, I, you know, I come down here once a year. Um, I'm in toys. Well, what's Ernest's job in this movie? Well, when we when we do get to Ernest, he's a taxi driver. No longer a camp counselor. No longer a camp counselor. Actually, let's throw up a chart showing a <laughs> Ernest's um, background check. He was a uh, a camp counselor in Tennessee, and now he is moved to Florida, where he's a taxi driver. Yes. And we'll just kind of we'll keep track of other jobs and, sure, and sure. locations he's held. So I assume Ernest picks up Santa Claus at the airport. Yeah, people yep. don't believe that this guy's Santa, but for some reason, uh, but oh, the the actor playing Santa, I he he was really bothering me. I, I tried looking up other stuff he's been in. He was in uh, Aladdin. He was he's the uh, voice of the Sultan, and it's the. The same voice. I was like, this guy just like defined wizard voices for me. <laughs> the name is Santa Claus. Oh. Uh, Ernest picks him up. He's singing, Oh Christmas tree, oh Christmas tree, how lovely oh, are Christmas. No, he's not singing. Okay. He's just saying, Oh Christmas tree over and over. <laughs> he shows up at the airport. He's driving a passenger, and it's shown that he's a very bad taxi driver. And he basically kills this guy, right? <laughs> The guy is like, he has the rictus of death by the end of this. He falls out of the car and Ernest puts him back in. He meets Santa Claus. I don't think he lets on that he's Santa yet at this point. Not to Ernest. Not to no. Ernest, but, even though but Ernest. But Santa knows that Ernest is a genuine, thoughtful, uh, uh, a guy with a big heart. He, yeah. Like as Santa, he knows everything about everyone. I think, yeah, Ernest, knows just, Ernest is he's on not the level. judging. He doesn't believe him, but he's not, yeah, he's not, he's not looking down on this. Everyone else thinks that uh, this guy is just a... Like, you know, a nut, he's like, well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, if, he does come off as kind of a stalker, right? Santa yeah. Claus, yeah. he's looking for a replacement and he has picked this guy, Joe something, uh, who lives in Orlando. He's like Captain Kangaroo, he, right? He's like That's a yeah, children's entertainer, but at this point in his life, he's just working at a children's museum. Okay. Probably because that's a set they could afford. Yeah. Um, you guys keep talking. I'm just going to go get something out of the toolbox to open this. So just keep talking. Don't, don't, oh, okay. don't mind me. Don't right. mind me. Don't it's going to be part of the episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Don't mind me. So they meet 
and um, Santa Claus tries to pitch to this guy, becomes Santa, but he gets interrupted by the sleazy, uh, this sleazy uh, agent. Yeah. Who is uh, trying to get uh, this Joe guy to show up in a, to to be in a movie? In this universe, as you established, Santa Claus is real, but it's kind of like the same rules as Tim Allen's The Santa Claus. That a person you bestow the mantle of Santa Claus from one individual to another to another, but there always has to be one Santa. They kind of play it off like Santa has some sort of degenerative disease where he's just kind of losing his touch, right? He's getting he's, older. He's, yeah, uh, like he's he, not immortal. Yeah, he's he's fucking cool, up. Kevin. He gave a kid real money instead of p- toy money. At one point, he kind of like ashamed. Wait, really? He's trying to pay Ernest back for the taxi uh, cab ride, and he pulls out like toy like Monopoly money, and then he's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, like it's a weird senility undertone for exactly. Santa Claus well, he's he admits he's slipping. He's yeah, like, I just can't do. I used to know everybody. Ever in, but I just can't do it like I used to. So I need this young stud of fifty-one to take over the role of Santa <laughs> for the next ten years. <laughs> but he's like just so, like such a nice guy, and he's trying to give this old man a chance. I vaguely remember a scene where he's being told he has to swear yeah, to be in a horror film. That, yeah, that's he, what he finds out later in the movie is this uh, this role that his lawyer got for him. It's uh, in a movie called Santa's Slay, but what they don't tell you is it's slay as in kill, slaughter. Uh, Santa Claus is really offended by this horror movie. They're telling him to like, oh, you got to lose the beard, Joe. And Santa hilariously says, no, Joe, no. (laughs) I want you to tint your hair and lose the beard. No, Joe, no. So it's funny even when Ernest isn't on screen. Yeah, there's actually some some humor to Santa Claus running around and people looking at him weird. Maybe John Cherry got a note after Ernest goes to camp. Like, hey, uh, it can be funny when Ernest isn't in the movie too. Yeah. Um, Santa also (laughs) hilariously punches the director of the film in the eye. Yeah, he gets so... So Santa Claus gets pissed off. He comes and he terrorizes a bunch of kids over Christmas vacation. Terrorizes children, did you say? Yeah. What? Christmas? Oh, whoa. Oh. So that's why he goes to jail. Because I remember Santa going to jail. Oh, yeah. Actually, he does go to jail. I'm trying to remember the, the order. I think they send Santa to jail because he's homeless. Oh, okay. They, they actually, yeah, they leave him at the Children's Museum and they say, uh, this guy is claiming to be Santa Claus. Why don't you pick him up, bring him down to the station? So they book Santa. They uh, they they like read his thumbprints, and they've got little like they have uh, yeah. uh, snowflakes on them. Yeah, okay. it's yeah, it's all coming back to me. Okay. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. They really do throw him in jail over nothing because he's a. Uh, because, I he guess punched a guy he, and he's homeless. No, I think I think this is b- before he punches the guy. Oh, really? He gets railroaded. But I thought he got so Ernest has to break him out because Ernest realizes he's Santa, right? Yeah. Yes. On their taxi ride earlier, by the way, there's a lot of car stunts at the beginning, which is kind of cool. There's like, they're driving over hills and like there's sparks coming out of the car and stuff. They almost hit this girl who was shoplifting or something. Uh, her name is Harmony, so she says. She's like a 16-year-old girl who's kind of, she's a runaway. Punky Brewster. And, uh, Not likable in any measurable way. Yeah, she's fine. She's kind of a foil. I, I realized halfway through, Ernest keeps doing a um, John Wayne impression to her. And I think it's supposed to be kind of a true grit kind of relationship. <laughs> uh, Interesting thing about this actress. Yes. She was born on Christmas. Oh, yes. that's right. December 25th is her birthday. Yeah. Yes. I, I don't know if that's how she got the role or. Was that on IMDb? It was. It was in the trivia. I looked oh, at the it trivia. might be bullshit then. Well, I, 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 no. The IMDb trivia for this movie is a lot more plausible. Um Nothing really jumped out as being bullshit to me. Yeah. Anyway, uh, they team up. There's no little kids in this movie, which is different. Some Ernest movies, you got your little kid friends. Other movies, there's just adults. This movie, they kind of, there's kind of like this halfway point where it's a, a Ernest just hanging out with a, a teenage girl. It's okay. It's kind of weird. Um, <laughs> she sleeps over his house. I think playing up the true grit angle might have been the safest way to handle that. Yes, exactly. Yeah, Ernest uh, is a rooster and... Um, she doesn't lose her arm in this movie. <laughs> um, so, Neil, t- help me out. Yeah. The two supporting comedians are not the same guys as camp, but they are the same two guys who work as security guards at the in Ernest Goes to it's Jail. one guy, the the bigger guy. Um, Sartain. Sartain, yeah. He's one of them in this movie. He's so, consistent. He's yeah, from camp. He's carried oh, over from right. camp. His uh, quieter friend, who looks like me wearing a Roy Scheider mask... <laughs> Is in this movie, and they're a much better comedy duo. They're a lot more. They're, they they have work a at the airport. They work at the airport, and they receive 
the these reindeer. giant crates full of reindeer. And uh, it's a much better runner than the food crap and can. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. They get to react to things that are in impossible and fantastic. Yeah, he's still doing the eye thing and doing the Dom DeLuise wheeze, but it's got like a sound effect now, so it's like more of a movie punctuating thing. <laughs> Don't we stumble into the first person scene pretty soon? Yeah, actually, yeah. Let's talk about that a Vern. little bit. This is, I think, this is the only movie with a first person Vern scene. According to the trivia, that we've this seen is, so far, that we've seen so far, but I think the trivia spoiled for me that there aren't other Vern scenes in other movies. Yeah, uh, which is disappointing to me because it's it's like the funniest part of this movie to me. It yeah. works. Yeah, it's it's really funny. They play Hallelujah. They play that Hallelujah music. It's a very unique visual. It's a, it's crazy to watch a feature film and to suddenly have like a first person extended shot. Yeah, it's like, it's it's like, like long, a steady cam long take in 1988 uh, on film. Yeah, like, and yeah. it's it's like an Ernest commercial where Ernest is being annoying to Vern, but it's got like a more wide angle lens and better camera work and a bunch of um just Ernest wrecking this guy's house, knocking stuff over and like ripping cords out of the wall. Like coordinated visual gags like yeah, okay, like, like on, on 30 seconds like have this wire explode It's or something. really well done and it, this is like the scene that I really remembered from this movie sure. because it's um it's weirdly, it's more, it's weirdly more cinematic than the rest of the movie. I think the lighting's very stark, right? Like, it's yeah, not, it's, it's, yeah, it's not soft, boring light. The first thing that happens is the oh, the door opens. We go for, you know from the third person to first person. He goes, it says, "Hey, hey Vern. Vern!" Shuts the door. Ho ho ho, Vern! Mary. Vern just shuts right the door in his face. Like, I don't want you in my it's life. It's really funny. And yeah. the fact that Vern, unfortunately, also lives in Florida now. Vern is in Florida now. <laughs> Vern probably moved to try <laughs> and get away from Ernest. And Ernest, and needed Ernest friends. came yeah. to Florida because Ernest is never aware of the fact that Vern doesn't like him. They uh, they find that uh, Santa left his magic sack in in their in the car. Yeah. Uh, Santa's always saying stuff like, "Oh my goodness, my sack." It's pretty funny, but uh, they. Um, <laughs> They realize by opening it and looking inside, Ernest opens it up and there's a bunch of light. And I think we all have the same thought of the Pulp, the suitcase. Pulp, fiction. From Pulp, it's the Pulp yep. fiction suitcase light. Tarantino Ernest. stole it. Yeah. From Ernest. He saved honestly, Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> if he got called out on that, he'd probably be like, yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah. I did. I, I, what I really like about the Santa sack stuff in this, whenever they open it and like you hear like that ominous kind of like. It's a radioactive music. hum. Yeah, okay, yeah. They play that sound and there's like like very warm, bright light coming out, but that's it. There's never a look into it where they're like there's like some majestic animated thing happening. It's it, all implied no with glitter the sound. The sound design is really good. That's in this a movie. good movie magic. And there is a really yeah. cool scene where Ernest reaches into the bag and he pulls out these glowing orbs. Yeah. Harmony is pointing out that like uh, th this seems radioactive. This seems dangerous, <laughs> and the sound and like the sheer amount of like blown out light coming off of this orb is like really intense for an Ernest movie. Yeah, and I was actually like just like oh man, this look looks really cool. Really unique. basic yeah. optical effects, just using light. Like mm -hmm. like if, if 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 the camera ever went in and towards the bag and revealed what was in there, it would never do your imagination justice. It's like a holy taboo. Yeah, what's in this bag? The camera pushes in on him like a Spielberg shot, and uh, he's like got the light underneath it, and it's like a totally—it's not a joke. It's just Ernest saying, "He's him." It's lit super well. Yeah, they nail the cue. There's like some solidness to this movie. As Double, a the film. Double, Double the money. Double money the from money from camp. So anyway, they they get into some hijinks trying to get Santa out of some situations. He's he's in jail. It looks like it might be the same jail that they filmed some of Ernest goes to jail in. I'll have to <laughs> confirm when we get to that movie. Uh, he just enjoys filming inside jails. Because the first thing I thought is this is shot really well. I wonder if like the first you know pieces of the idea were forming in his head. This is a milestone for the Ernest films. The way that uh, Ernest gets uh, Santa out of these various situations that they run into is he adopts characters. He puts on disguises. He uh, he does some social engineering to, <laughs> to get a man out of prison. And this might be the weirdest one of these I remember. Is him as the uh, as like the city official or like the professor. He's taking care of the mayor's daughter. Yes. Yeah. And uh, it's a good character. Um, he's doing a, <laughs> he's like doing like a really snooty guy. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Santa is in prison with a bunch of hardened criminals too. And, Ooh, he, uh, he and the joke them. is, yeah, he like gets them all. It's actually pretty funny when he says, um, this man believes he's Santa. And like one of the criminals stands up and says like, he is Santa. <laughs> it's like pretty good. He's getting them singing carols. And there's a really nice shot of Santa. He sticks his hand out of the cell and it's a great visual gag. There's yeah. someone in the back with the voice of an angel.
So this is like a legit good movie. Yeah. It's kind of good, yeah. Is this the first good movie, well, not just good for an earnest movie movie? It's we, actually like, it's a pretty good Christmas classic, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm feeling it. Um, yeah. There's some parts get a little dodgy, which we'll get to. I'm actually forgetting what actually happens, but I know that Ernest dresses up as uh, Auntie Nelda yeah. again, and she does mention the dead son, but it's less of a sticking point this time. Son's still dead, though. Yeah, and um, also to get into the movie studio, he dresses up as the Snake Man. This yes. might, this is probably a top five for all of Ernest fandom. It's here. really funny. Ernest playing this just like wreck of a man who's missing teeth and he can barely talk. You want one for your boy? I think it's Ernest from Tennessee up north making fun of Floridians. I remember seeing this character in the Ernest uh, Your World as I See It or Ernest's Family Album. One of those weird 30 minutes. Oh, so he's done it before? He's done this character before, but never this well. Yeah. The underbite. The underbite. <laughs> the yeah. tooth black, which my we're, whole, we're proponents of tooth black. When I told my family I was doing an Ernest podcast, this is what they brought up. Because me and my sister used to watch this movie, and this was the character that we would imitate. My dad did this character, too. Yeah, it's yeah. just like a, it's just a really funny quick quick scene where he uh, gets his way. He, again, does some social engineering. He convinces this guy that he's got snakes, <laughs> and he repeatedly says the word, Pison. <laughs> <laughs> the snake is pison. He pison. Pison snake. Oh, I thought he was saying python. No, he's saying pison. Like, oh, that's that, that poison. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that. So he uses his acting power to get into the movie studio to sneak Santa in. So Santa can meet the Santa's in the back of the truck, which, you know, he, oh, he right. hides yeah, him he's in there hiding under by there pretending it's pretending snakes. snakes. And, and okay. Ernest yeah. really hams up how dangerous. You don't want to lift open that <laughs> yeah. snake. Yeah. So Santa and I gave one to my boy. He starts singing a hymn that I don't think is a real hymn. Like he's just like, <laughs> oh, no, that's all right. Just take the truck on over to the snake. The, the, what ends up happening is Santa gets in, and Ernest is still in character as the snake guy. There's this great L cut where you know, the scene carries on. Santa gets into the studio, and he meets up with that, what's the, the actor that he wants? The Captain Kangaroo. Joe, yeah, yeah. The Captain Kangaroo guy. And then it cuts back, and Ernest is hanging out by his truck, still acting like the snake guy. Yeah. And some other movie guys come by, and they go, hey, are you the snake guy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, oh, yeah, that's me. And they go, oh, so you could take snakes in this truck? Oh, yeah, put them in the back. And they just dump, like... A metric ton of snakes into the back. <laughs> They're covered in like water and stuff. <laughs> and like they walk away, and Ernest just looks into the bed of his truck and then just breaks character. Jim Varney's still acting, but Ernest is no longer oh, acting. Yeah, yeah. And he just goes, oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> And the snakes are still with him later because he's talking to Santa. Like they go, they they come back to the rest of Florida, and then there's just like a quick, sh just like cut in shot of him with snakes attached to his face, and he goes, uh, "Snakes!" Ugh. <laughs> and then the scene That's ends. It, yeah. <laughs> like, snakes! Ah! Like, uh, where did this come up? Like the writers are sitting down, like, okay, so what's Ernest doing while Santa meets with the new Santa? Uh, like, I don't know. Let's look at our roster of well, Jim Varney characters. Ooh, what about the snake? What about this like weird Southern snake guy we could do? Yeah. <laughs> like, wh who thought snakes? <laughs> it's good. Don't question it. <laughs> anyway, Santa's not successful in convincing Joe because of the the movie that he's you know involved in. They're trying to get him to shave his beard and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but he clearly is uncomfortable with this horror movie. Uh, but Santa goes home to to Ernest's place, and I think he's just not feel he's he's feeling like he's gonna fail. They get split up at some point, and he realizes that oh yeah, Harmony took the bag. She's abusing the bag for she's abusing yeah. the bag. She's trying to get money out of it or something. Oh. And she's going to the train station. She's gonna skip town with this magic bag, and Santa loses faith. I think Santa, yeah, so Santa ends up at the at the bus depot, and he runs into Harmony again, and then what happens? <laughs> this Ernest movie's, saves Christmas. This movie's more complicated than camp. I'm having trouble sticking this is to like, the plot. This is also 90 minutes, right? Maybe. I think it's actually two hours. Is so, it two so, hours? So what, what, so what happens? Like, the, do the reindeer get out of the airport, and Ernest... Okay, so... Two Ernest, elves come down from okay. the North Pole. Let, 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 all right, right, all right, all right. <clears throat> so... There's some sort of built-in deadline with the reindeers, 
and Ernest goes to try and pick them up for Santa, I guess. At the airport? At the airport. The uh, the two guys finally meet Ernest, and they say, like, no, th- these are these are marked, they're for someone named Elf, Elves, and suddenly, just barreling into the movie, there's two elves that show up, and it's just, like, two elderly, really short guys, yeah. uh, a man and a woman. I had totally forgotten about these characters until they showed up, and I was just like, Oh yeah, there's elves in this. Just out of nowhere, they got it's pointy a real ears. Christmas movie. Yeah, <laughs> they're just kind of they they uh, they just come off as like uh, cute grandparents, and they're just screaming a lot. They get stuck with Ernest. Right? They get like, stuck with Ernest. Like an Ernest act of this movie ends up on Santa's sleigh for some reason for trailers for trail for the for the trailers. Yeah, <laughs> with these elves, and this is like the big action set piece. It doesn't really need to happen, but he's just zooming around, flying. Yeah, they got he special has no effects. idea how to use the sleigh. Uh, it's, it's pretty funny. Unbelievably dangerous. It's kind of cheap looking because they're clearly just in a black studio and just like tilting the camera and screaming a lot. But uh, Ernest is really funny. He's pulling good faces. And at one point he yells, uh, we're all going to die. We're all going to die. As they're careening into a building. <laughs> does, it, does it like hold up? Does it look like. Oh, it's fun. I mean, it's not quite. It's not. Superman, Chris it's, Reeves flying. Yeah, but it's it's fun. I, I will say probably the Santa Claus does it better. I mean, you, you, yes, yeah. For Varney's sense of humor, you need to do it in camera. Like they probably, yeah. they they need to avoid green screen as much as they can because you want Varney interacting with the light and like the camera pushing. It's in. a real. The sleigh is got a bunch of gizmos on it. It looks like a Dr. Dr. Otto prop. Yeah. Um. And uh, Ernest is trying to figure it out. It's like his taxi cab. Uh, incompetence is kind of coming back in this uh, scene. Sure. Um, he's trying to pre- pull levers, press buttons. He doesn't know. He's, yeah. he's scared. Yeah. yeah. All this accomplishes is uh, Joe is at the, uh, like, uh, you know, some office. He's about to sign the papers on being in this movie. And he looks out the window and sees the sleigh flying around. And he says, oh, Santa is real after all. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck <laughs> you. And he's he, like, he doesn't say fuck you, but he says Merry Christmas to, to all of them. And he leaves. He get, walks. Yeah. Walks out. So, yeah. so the title is predicated on that. Scene. Yes. Yeah, Ernest in that moment saves Christmas. That's when he saves Christmas. Bingo. Yes. Okay. By being witnessed by the future Santa Claus. He doesn't try to. He's just, he's just trying to But he's witnessed sleigh. by the future Santa Claus. He does okay. matter. He does accomplish something in this okay. movie. What is Ernest trying to do when he's flying the sleigh? I don't fucking know. One great gag when he's flying the he hits a button on the um on the sleigh and it literally does the Star Wars hyperdrive Millennium Falcon oh, yeah. effect. <laughs> and then uh it cuts to a still image of the planet Earth and he's doing laps around it really fast. Yeah. Like Superman and it's like finally the movie has turned into a total cartoon yeah. just for this one specific thing that Ernest is doing. Yeah. Harmony shows up with the bag, restores Santa Claus's faith, at the same time that Joe turns up and says I'm sorry I didn't believe you. What's the deal? Yeah. <laughs> the elves are back. The sleigh is back. The reindeer are back. The bag, and the bag the is, back. is back. Santa bestows he the He shakes mantle. hands with, with yep. Joe. And uh, some yeah. Yeah, rotoscoping glitters. Yeah, the, the hand glows. There's a little magical sparkly effect. Dr. Otto style. It's not quite as uh, as punk as that. It's it's, <laughs> it's a, good. It, it's it's like like a twinkling it's blue. Charming. It's, it's like a crest. it's Christmas movie magic. It looks exactly. like something from a crest commercial, a toothpaste commercial. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ernest shows up. He does the gag where he's about to hit the ground. He stops perpendicular. And then he looks at the camera and says, Air brakes. <laughs> Everything's in place. Uh, he has bestowed Santa powers onto Joe. Joe is does Santa. Joe gain he's, weight or? Uh, I guess so. Uh, the original Santa's not that big. He, he's just got like a little tummy. They both look really different, but they both look like good Santas. Sure. It's, yeah. He looks like a younger Santa. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, Harmony's there. She decides to go back to her parents and give them a call and stuff. Balance is restored. The balance is restored. Joe decides to go deliver the presents, but uh, he lets Ernest drive one more time. Oh, yeah. And um, the elves are like, <laughs> he probably shouldn't do that. <laughs> it's pretty funny. So <laughs> Ernest's volition in this story is he tries to remind Harmony to not so to believe, mm-hmm. which. Mm-hmm. Kind of falls on deaf ears until later when she sees Santa. He does inspire Joe. He does aid Santa. He gets him out of the airport. <laughs> uh, he gets Santa out of prison. Mm-hmm. Am I missing anything? What else does he do to help save Christmas? It's the reindeer out of the airport. He's, he drives. He drives the taxi. Yeah. So Ernest does save Christmas. Yes. Aver- properly does advertised. actually save Christmas, correct. No false I guess, advertising. Yeah. Everyone kind of messes up at some point in this movie. Santa's not doing so hot. Crisis of faith. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just um, every, everyone kind of pulls together at the end of this movie. And it's pretty nice. And uh, it's got a 
warm Christmas message. Is it it's safe to say the highlight of this movie is the snake guy? Yes. It has nothing to do with Christmas. That is the Actually, part of the no, movie. I, I think the highlight is the Vern scene. Okay. It's a little yeah, more cynical. It's more like a annoying, it's more like a Christmas vacation kind of humor in that yeah. scene. But it's, uh, this movie does something. Uh, Ernest does put his face on glass in, in this movie. <laughs> just so you cheating. Get, it's just like, <laughs> that's cheating. Yeah, it's yeah just, but it's like Jim Varney's face plus the effect of glass on his face. He's like, just, hey, Santa. Yeah, and then, then the movie ends and you get your... Not really an after credits stinger scene, it's, but it's like right as the credits start, and it's the uh, the two guys. Just like camp. Just like camp, but this is much better. It's them. They, they're they trying to figure out another box that they've got, and it's the Easter bunny, and the ears pop out, and then the oh, guy yeah. looks kinda at the camera, does the eye thing back and forth. It's kind of creepy, isn't it? It is a little creepy, yeah. yeah. It's a pretty great uh, sequel setup. Yeah, yeah. It's like not really a sequel setup. I, I, I imagine people at the time thought, oh, is the next Ernest going to... Be him dealing with the Easter Bunny because at that point they'd only been two Ernest movies, and it sounded like this blew camp out of the water, right? Like it's a much more fun movie, yeah. I think. And I, I, it's one of those things. I, I don't think we'd go as far as to say, oh, this is a great film, but if it's December and you turned on cable and Ernest Saves Christmas is on, I'd rather watch that than ninety percent of other Christmas movies, which is probably a testament to how it nailed the Christmas magic vibe that. It's crap. <laughs> it is, you know, Coke trying to sell you their version of Santa Claus mm -hmm. very literally in this movie. Uh, there's one plot thread I forgot to mention, which is uh, the businessman at the beginning in the airport mentions like, uh, I wish it would snow or something like that. Yeah. And then oh, at the end, yeah. uh, Santa, the new Santa, Joe, uh, his first uh, thing that he does is he makes it snow in, in Florida. Florida. In Florida. In Florida. Wow. Great. <laughs> Florida's kind of... Go uh, on. <laughs> <laughs> this, Florida is subtly depressing in this movie. I, yeah, I, I noticed uh, there's yes. a lot of like tacky lawn decoration in this movie, but it's not the fun curated stuff that Pee Wee would have. Sure, it's all just boring Flamingos crap on crap. people's lawns, yeah. and I felt like that was just there because it's Florida. I'm going to go out on a limb and say this is better than Camp and Dr. Otto. Agreed. It's tighter. There's just more to look at. It's double the budget of the previous movie, and it shows. The snake guy is my favorite thing I've seen in a Nerdist movie. The Vern scene is great. Um, yeah. The Christmas the Christmas stuff is sincere enough to kind of yeah. rise above the, uh, the corporate... Um, Coca-Cola Disney aspect. Yeah, yeah. It's Coca-Cola and Disney making a movie with <laughs> Ernest, who started as a commercial pitchman. Sure. But it still has a heart. In spite of all of it. Yeah, I think it's because of the, the, it's still got the same small te team from Tennessee yeah. working on it. And uh, they didn't go to L.A. to make it. They, they filmed in a different southern state. I think Cherry gets to flex certain muscles when Ernest is off camera in this movie too. You, like Santa in prison doing everything with the, the inmates singing and just like the, 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 the simple effects of the light in the bag. Like there's just some fun film. They're doing more than just pointing the camera at like a bunch of campers in this like, movie. They're not just throwing a wide angle lens, shoving it in Jim Varney's face and saying, be funny. Yeah, be I mean, do, they do, do that it. too, but it's, but it's, it's like the it's best scene in the yeah. movie for you. For yeah. Money. yeah. <laughs> But uh, I mean, overall, it's more scripted. And I will say, uh, I do like in Ghost to Camp, uh, Jim Varney feels a little more raw and it feels a little bit more sure. like he's writing his own lines. That movie was also like, written, I think, to explore Ernest and kind of just poke at the character. Be like, well, what? how do we make a movie out of Ernest? Yeah. Or is, is he real? Can other people see him? What's going on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and like, are there rules? Can he go out after midnight? Yeah. <laughs> Whereas when Ernest saves Christmas, he is just comedic relief. He does have agency. He does help save Christmas. Mm -hmm. Varney is flexing his cartoon muscles, though, in this. So, yeah, the uh, the best Ernest movie that we have watched so far is Ernest Saves Christmas. I wonder if they started shooting this after Camp came out. If they had that much heads up, you know? But who knows? Everyone involved is dead. Anyway, so we got three <laughs> movies down. <laughs> <laughs> so that's Ernest Saves Christmas. I'm glad that we all uh, really liked it. And, yeah, I um, did. I mean, you haven't seen it that recently, but... Uh, it stuck out. I yeah, remembered most of this out. movie. Yeah. I can't wait to see what we watch next next week, next year, next time. Next episode. Yeah. Uh, who knows when that'll be? Who knows what movie it'll be? The wheel will tell us. Know what I mean? I want to spin the wheel.
more like turning it. <laughs> 